All right, guys, what is up? Rad Potential YouTube, welcome to another Rad Formational video. So, this week is kind of a deep dive into I'm building a 13B REW, and I'm gonna try to make some more like detailed videos about the process, just so you guys know what's going through my head, how I do it. Now, to preface this whole video, there is a bunch of different people who build rotary engines, which means there's a bunch of different ways that people build rotary engines. I'm not here to say that my way is the best way, that it's the right way, that it's whatever, but it's how I do it, it works for me, and that's what we're going over, okay? So first things first, go back, watch the rotary engine teardown video. It's got rotary car trivia, REW teardown. If you've never torn one down, you wanna see that, you wanna know how to take your engine apart if you've never done it before. The next thing, cleaning all of your parts, okay? I'm not gonna show you in this video the detailed cleaning of me sitting down and scrubbing every inch of all this stuff and getting it perfectly clean. But I will go over the cliff notes per se of that process, all right? The next thing is you need to make sure that you have accounted for everything you need to put your engine back together, okay? Which we're gonna go over that in this video as well. So first bit, let's get started with the cleaning. I've got all my irons, all my housings, everything clean. To clean these big parts, literally, degreaser, pressure washer, that's your first step. The next step, get them prepped for paint if you're going to prep them. So clean the outside to get all that crap off. You wanna gently clean any of the wear surfaces, okay? So like the, these bits here, you can go over them with like a Scotch-Brite pad really lightly. Get them clean, okay? If your stuff needs surfaced, send them off and have them surfaced, okay? That's the bit on these. One key thing to do on your irons and housings, depending on what style of rotary engine you have, is to take a screwdriver or a pick and make sure that you get all of the junk out of the coolant seal grooves. That are these little grooves that are in the iron on this REW and on some of the earlier engines they are in the housing. The next bit, front cover, etc. Same thing, pressure wash this out Get it nice and clean. This one's got some oil staining in it. Not a big deal. We got all the dirt out of it. Nice coat of black paint. As far as all the oil passages, everything else, blow them out with air. Especially if you've pressure washed stuff, you want to make sure you get all the water out of them. The next thing, if you're not going to build your engine right away and you've just cleaned all the oil and grease off of it, spray them down with WD-40, some penetrating oil, something okay on all of the bare metal surfaces otherwise they will flash rust which you can see just this spot even from like one night you know sitting out here in my shop gets a little humid my shop does is not climate controlled so it is what it is do that the next bit the rotors these are a lot more tedious okay once you get into cleaning these i like to just use penetrating oil um, you can use diesel fuel, kerosene. That's the stuff that I generally like to use. I don't like to use purple power on these. Um, I'll typically hit the faces of them with a very soft wire wheel just to get the crust off. And then I tend to clean these mostly by hand with a very low abrasive Scotch-Brite pad, something like that. Not even the purple ones. I'll use like the green ones, the stuff you wash your dishes with. Um, that tends to work the best for me. And these, I'll usually spend like probably an hour cleaning each one. You need to take either your old apex seals, a set of spare ones, junk ones, um, same thing with side seals, and you need to clean out all of these grooves really well. And then once you think you have them clean, you need to clean them again. Nothing should be in that. Same thing. Blow it out with air once you're done. After all that, coat it in some WD-40 or something, because like I said, they will flash rust. Okay, the next bits. Quick cleaning stuff. Everything over here. E-shaft, generally, you can just wipe them down. Um, if you spun a bearing, you, know, you might have to get a different one. I don't really know anybody that can like polish these or turn them out. Kind of just get a different one. The rest of this stuff, very simple. I just clean it with, like I said, some penetrating oil, wipe it off. Most of that stuff's not entirely dirty if it's on the inside of your engine, unless the inside of your engine came from the Titanic, which I've seen before. St stuff like this can get really ruined. Um, but basically wipe all this stuff down, get all the crud off of it, you know, get your bolts looking nice, um, get your dowels looking nice, try to keep everything in a reasonable order. So like I like to keep my front, uh, my front, uh, E-shaft washer, the spacer, 
the uh, distributor drive gear, all of this, which like I know how it goes back together, but somebody who's never done it before, you may want to keep that in order so that you can remember. Or go online, find this picture, show you what to do, thing not to do, don't crush a Torrington bearing. I've done that before. So that's all the front stuff. Typically, if the engine's in good shape and I haven't needed to like, you know, it didn't eat a bearing, it didn't do anything weird, you know, there's a washer built into this front uh, counterweight that stays in. I don't like to parts wash unless they really need it. I don't like to do a parts wash of the uh, Torrington bearings. There's oil in places in here that you can't replace it. And if you do do it, soak these in oil. Just leave them in like I have a little dog tray that I sit these down in. Soak them in oil. Keep the dirt out of them. Dowels, clean them out, blow them out with air. The REW has this weird plastic thing um, that goes on the coolant port. Make sure you clean your pickup tube, okay? This one's not perfect. I got to clean it a little bit more, but blow this out with air. Scrub it, clean it, get this good. You don't want junk in your pickup tube. The next bit, your tension bolts. I've already installed new washers on all of these. That's what I was doing at the start of this. And uh, take your tension bolt. I like to take my drill, wire wheel, put it in the vise, put the drill in the vise so it just spins, and clean all the crust off your tension bolts. It's just so much nicer to have these to be nice and fresh and clean. You will need to also make sure if you're assembling an engine from scratch, there is one that is longer. You need one tension bolt with a Mazda M. You need 17 of them without the Mazda M. I think RX-8s may have one or may have one more, but um, just look at the back of your engine, however many holes they need tension bolts. One of them, or on an RX-8, I think two of them are actually too long. They're longer than the rest. That's the Mazda M one. You can see the shiny one here, longer than that one at the same bit. The next thing, you need to go through all of your seals. Some people will buy a comprehensive rebuild kit, okay? Now, I'm not gonna tell you what kit to buy, what's the best, what whatever, this, that, and the other. You can buy whatever one you want. But here are the things you're going to need to make sure that you have, okay, in order to put your engine together, right? You need oil control rings, oil control ring springs. You need the rubber seals that go inside these oil control ring housings, okay? They sit inside the rotor. You need all of your rotor seals and springs, which we've went over in the, uh, the previous video on clearancing side seals. You're going to see all that stuff get installed minus the oil control rings and your apex seals and springs. You obviously need apex seals and springs. Once you have all the hard parts, right, things that go on the rotor, hard metal parts, jump over to your soft seals, okay? The soft seal kits, you can buy, like I said, there's a bunch of different brands of them. There's different styles. You know, rotary aviation soft seals look a lot different from factory Mazda soft seals, which look a lot different from Atkins ones. So like this one right here, this is an Atkins soft seal. These are a rotary aviation soft seal, the inner rings. Uh, the outer rings generally are all pretty much the same, except you can see this black one right here it has no white on it. That is, I believe, either an Atkins or a Rotary Aviation, and the OEM Mazda ones um, have these white, like, little pieces on them, I think, or the Atkins ones. I don't know. There's a bunch of different ones. They're different prices. They'll all work. Some of them have their quirks. I prefer to use OEM Mazda soft seals. They're generally more consistent, they fit better. It's what Mazda designed these for, that's what I use. Next, the rest of your gaskets. This is a REW. It's got a pinched thing. Anyways, the rest of your gaskets. You can buy a pretty comprehensive gasket kit. Um, you should know when you took your engine apart what gaskets are in good enough shape to reuse, what gaskets you should replace. I would recommend replacing everything because you don't want to put your whole car back together and have a vacuum leak at the lower intake manifold. Because on an FD, that, I would pull the engine back out to fix that. I wouldn't take the lower intake manifold off in the car. No shot. There's too much stuff going on. Most FD guys don't want their paint scratched. It's easier to just take the whole engine out, disassemble it on the stand, put it back together, put it back in. Easy peasy. So, once you've gone through your checklist and you're ready to build your engine, you're ready to stack it all up, you know where everything is, you know where everything's going. I would do one final wipe down and clean the day that you're putting it together. Okay? What I mean by that. 
dust off all the stuff that's been sitting on your table looking pretty for the last week while you were cleaning all the other parts. Get all of the insides of these, wipe them off. If you had them all oiled up, clean that oil off, just wipe it down. Make sure everything's clean. I haven't assembled my rotors yet, but when I assemble my rotors and put all the soft seals in, I have a video doing that, which I can show, show and link that video. I like to put a little grease in here, make sure everything sticks, but I'll also, before I do anything with these, take these and blow them all out again with air. Make sure everything is fresh, get all the dust out of it. I know I don't have a clean room, I have a dusty old shop, so this stuff, gotta get it clean. You don't want stuff in there, you don't want these seals getting stuck. You want to make sure that everything is copacetic. So that is basically what runs through my head when I'm preparing to stack a rotary engine. Okay. As far as the tools that you will need, literally easiest things ever, I guess, tools and then other associated substances. So first we'll start with the tools. You're going to need a 19 millimeter big old socket. You're going to need the big nut socket that goes on the back, a 52 millimeter. This guy, um, you're going to need a 12 millimeter for all the stationary gear bolts. You know, these, this, this, and this, all of these are 12s. You're going to need a 10 to put your oil pump back on. I don't really ever take the oil pump gear off the oil pump. I just leave them on there and I take the oil pump off the iron. Um, you're going to need a 17 millimeter to tighten this. You're going to need a torque wrench that goes up to 30 foot pounds. Um, yeah, literally. That's it. There's a couple little other things that I like to have around. This is a little piece of like, I don't know, it's like wire, but I have a point on the end of it. I don't know if you can see that point. What this is for is when you're trying to push your apex seals down into the, the rotor. Sometimes the corner seal can get crooked. This is what I use to help straighten that. And that all, I'm gonna build, do a comprehensive assembly video of this engine this week so it may come out next week depending on when this gets stacked just because it's gonna be super cold and we got a firewood um but there will be like a 45 minute probably an hour long video me talking you through putting this whole engine together what i do the order of this set and the other um so drop any questions in this video okay for things you want me to make sure that i mention in that video all right what was the last thing i was going to talk about there is one other thing. Um, well, we talked about tools. We talked about this. We talked about the engine stuff. We talked about, oh, yeah, 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 substances. Okay. When you're assembling your rotary engine, a few things that you need to be cognizant of. Knock the stuff over. Let me just grab all the things. Okay. When I assemble the rotors, okay, and you'll see in the rotor video, I tend to use regular old multi-purpose grease, just like lather it on over the side seals, lather it on over the corner seals to hold the seals in the rotor. When you go to assemble it, which you'll see, we're gonna take the rotor and flip it upside down and drop it into the engine. You don't want those seals to fall out. You will need some sort of way to hold the coolant seals into the iron. On these, the front iron, it's easy, right? This thing sits flat. You can literally lay them in here. Gravity holds them down. When you go to do the center iron on an REW, you have to take that center iron and the housing's already on here, right? In the rotor. And you're going to set the center iron on there. If you don't have anything holding the coolant seals in, they'll fall out. You don't want that to happen. If they fall out, it's a real pain in the butt. You got to come back. Most likely you got the E shaft. You're doing all sorts of monkey stuff to get it in there if you're by yourself. So people use... Hylomar, people use Vaseline, Permatex, Hi-Tech. That's what I use. This stuff, it's a little more sticky, okay? It's kind of like using RTV, um, except it like doesn't ever go completely hard, if that makes sense. It's more of like a, like a pasty glue. I don't know. It's like seven bucks at your local parts store. I use this. The other thing that I use in addition to that is I will take a syringe... Like literally, let me dig it out of this little box. This isn't the one I'm gonna use. This one's dirty, but this is a used one. I've already done. Um, yeah, it's kind of jacked. I'll take a syringe like this. You can get them at CVS, little pointer thing. I will suck up the high tack and put it in the groove all the way around, okay? Then I lay my seal in there. 
And what that does is it not only holds it in for assembly, but provides just an extra layer of sealage so you know that you're good. Um, you'd still do a coolant chamber pressure test after that, but that's what I use. The next thing, you need some sort of assembly lube, okay? I've got this, just grabbed it from the parts store, Sta lube since 1933, sounds cool, whatever. Anyways, some sort of assembly lube. You need to lube the bearings, all right? The bearings in the rotor, I like to lube the shaft, I like to lube the bearings, we lube it all. So when you put it together and you start it for the first time and it starts before you get oil pressure and whatever, you got stuff in there going, okay? But you should crank it to get oil pressure before you try to start it. But anyways, make sure you lube it. Otherwise, that's pretty much it. I don't lather the whole inside of the engine full of Vaseline and grease to make it have compression so it starts. I don't do that. Um, I don't really like put any crazy grease on the apex seals. I don't really grease the housings. I've put enough grease to make it hold the parts in. That's about it. Uh, like I said, these, this. And that's my way of doing things, um, kind of talk through. So, like I said, drop any questions or comments below on this. Um, I know I went through that stuff pretty fast, but there's a lot of stuff in here. It's a lot simpler than a small block Chevy, guys, trust me. Um, and, and that's pretty much it. Um, as far as what's in here, you know, I mean, you can go through the parts list for one of these engines, but, you know, you can see it, count it, whatever you need. This is pretty much everything. Uh, rotor seals and stuff you can see all that and hard parts you can see all that so drop any questions below would love to hear them let me know what you want me to make sure i hit on in the next video and with that i'm gonna let you guys go thank you guys very much for watching love you guys checking out these videos hope these videos help you um, on your way to building your own rotary engine i know there's a lot of crazy shops out there building stuff's expensive so if you can do it yourself and if i can help you that's the way to do it so thank you guys for watching we'll see you in the next one keep it rad we gotta find the dog. Come here. Come on. What's up? Hey, come here. Come here. You gotta say hi. Can you sit? Good job. Good job. Peace, guys.